I'm in Stanwick. This is the second video of the series about Morbium, the Roman fort at Pierce Bridge. And I'm about three and a half miles southwest of Pierce Bridge and I'm in the village of Stanwick. This was the seat of power for a very powerful queen called Cartamandua. What I'm going to do is show you the ancient Iron Age track, some of which is still in existence today. So we're going to start off from the Roman ruins here, cross where the old Brigante tribe bridge may have been, and travel down this footpath. Now that's the route that still exists today. Here we are flying over modern day Pierce Bridge and as you look down the Roman walls to the fortification would have encapsulated most of the village. You can see now that the cars are travelling down and where that red car is parked on the left is where the first double gatehouse would have been. And we talked in a previous video about the Roman ruins. You can see the uh, remains of the ditch and the hypercourse as we fly over. The bridge that you can see coming up would not have been there, but to the left of it is the George pub. And if you can see the house, it's just beyond the George um, by the end of the tree line. That's where the track would have gone up and crossed the river about where we're flying over now which is to the left of the bridge straight through that house there and then into the field um, following about the left hand side of the tree line as it goes down now you can see in the distance you can see that there is a difference in field colouring. You can see the crop field to the left which is lighter colour and then by the fence line there you can begin to pick up a track and you can see to the left of the woods the track going to the left of it and it will go off into the distance following the boundary of the field line all the way up um, to the left of the woods. Now I'm just going to come across a bit so that you can see the line of the track. And here we come across and you can start to see if you look down past the trees there you can see the trackway going off and it goes off into the distance for another few miles. What I'm going to do now is pan round so we can see Pierce Bridge again and we can put into context why the Briganti tribe were there long before the Roman fort. In the fields to the west of the fort you can see some farmland with some huts and in those fields there were Iron Age roundhouses thought to belong to the Briganti tribe and this is the village that the track served and the crossing which is by the George Hotel which you can see in the lower right of the screen. This is the ancient pathway on top of the hill which goes north that way towards Pierce Bridge. This was probably a track that was used by the Briganti tribe who were based at Stanwick which is in that direction which is south. This is looking down the track towards Pierce Bridge in the north and to the right of it you can see a field enclosed by hedge and tree boundaries. That was purported to have been a possible site for a wooden Roman fort and beyond the trees down in the valley and it's quite a deep valley is the River Tees and to the north of that those trees there where the last Roman fort built of stone was made. You can see the track there going further into the distance for miles and miles towards Stanwick and again if we look back down you can 
clearly see the markings of the road heading down to the distance. Far into the distance you can see the tree line which is the Calvary Bank uh, which is above Pierce Bridge uh, which is over to the left if you follow the line of the track. From the existing track I have extrapolated down towards Stanwick for another kilometre and a half to where I think the track may have gone although it could have gone via Oldborough St John but that's not really known I've just looked at the most logical route that goes directly to Stanwick but what I'm going to do now is show you the extent of the fortifications remember we've got a five meter stone wall around mounds which would have been in place in the time of the Brigante tribe that we know of from the first century so I'm going to just pick a different colour here. There's also evidence of other mounds which could possibly be inner walls or earlier fortifications covering a smaller area. OK, so that's what we know of Stanwick and its fortifications. We're flying over Stanwick now and we're going to have a look at the extent of the wall which was about five meters high. You can see in the orange there beyond the church the wall line as we go round Stanwick. And again it dog legs round there you can see the road in the distance modern day road. The root of the wall is slightly missing here, but you can see it continues round the field boundary into the distance. And then dog legs round. There's a road and a village behind that. And you can see it turns a corner and starts heading north again towards the right of the picture. A slightly higher view now but the same direction you can see that it goes off now to the west and along and the church in the corner then back to where we started and that is the extent of the four mile perimeter round Stanwick. These are reconstructions of an Iron Age fortification like you would have seen at Stanwick. And if you look down, you can see the markings of where the roundhouses and roads would have been, much like this depiction in the photographs here. This is day two of my documentary about Stanwick, the Iron Age fort. And we're here at the northern end. And you can see the ramparts here, which would have had a stone wall of about five metres on top and it would have had defensive ditches too on the northern side and this encompassed as we've seen from the earlier part of the video about uh, 700 acres of land originally there would have been about 16 acres um, a small defensive position but that was extended and it's thought that the extension wasn't completed either but I'll talk about that later on in the video. Here we are flying over some of the ramparts here and this is the northern defences and on the other side would have been a large defensive ditch but you can begin to see how substantial some of the structures are. They've been cut through by agricultural use and obviously there's been some er erosion over time but you can clearly see that they were quite substantial structures. I'm on top of the ramparts here and we're going to see an example inside the defensive ditch of the only remaining parts of the stone wall which would have been about five meters high 
encompassing the whole of the perimeter. Go down the northern part of the ramparts, we can see the line of the wall going off into the distance following the tree and hedge line. But if we pan round towards the center of the land, we can see the church, which is center right, and the settlement, modern day settlement of Stanwick. I'm now standing by the church in Stanwick. Um, this is part of the actual village itself and it's the site of the old Tofts which was the original fortification and uh, enclosure which was about 16 hectares before its extension. See the church that we've just looked at and if I pan over to the west you can see uh, the ditches and embankment which would have been the original enclosure and if I pan round towards the main building here this area which I'm panning round now is uh, the Tofts which would have been the site of the first fortification which the enclosure would have encapsulated. In black you can see the third phase, the later phase of the fortifications going round Stanwick. Um, part of it was incomplete but I'll talk about that later. The actual Tofts there was the first settlement and defences and then the extension as you can see around where the church was that I spoke about is in red. So this shows distinctly the three phases that Stanwick went through as an Iron Age fortification. It seems that Stanwick was the administration centre and fortifications that the Brigante tribe used and their leaders were Cartamandua who was born in 16 AD and Venivius who was born in 13 AD and they were the co-rulers of the Brigante tribe. The Romans invaded in 43 AD and Venivius was said to have married Cartamandua around about that time. According to Roman writings at the time 11 of the major tribes in Britain aligned themselves and pledged their allegiance to Rome. Cartamandua was said to be one of these rexes or tribal kings but nothing was written down to denote who these 11 leaders were but there was a lot of opposition to Roman rule and Caractacus was one of the tribal leaders that rallied support and often instigated guerrilla type attacks on Roman activity throughout the southeast. He was initially defeated by the Romans and sought refuge with the Welsh tribes before being lured into a battle by the Romans and eventually defeated in AD 50. Caractacus then fled north and sought sanctuary under Cartamandua and the Brigantes but she either out of loyalty to the Romans or fear of reprisals and the protection of her own tribe handed him over to the Romans and then he was sent to Rome to be paraded in Rome as part of a triumph. He gave a good account of himself and pleaded for his life which impressed the emperor so much he was released along with his family. This all happened around AD 51. The fact that Cardamandua handed over Caractacus did not go down well with Vinidius. Cartamandua got tired of his attitude and also she became embroiled in an affair with one of her men-at-arms, Volocatus, and divorced him some time after AD 51. Vinidius started to drum up anti-Roman sentiment around the Brigantes and regions and tribes around them and which resulted in him plotting an attack on Cartamandua. Cartamandua requested help from the Romans and according to Tacitus the Romans held her in such regard that they sent legions north to support her. However it didn't go too well at first for the Romans as they were evenly matched with Venivius's forces. It was only when the 9th legion Hispana arrived from York that they were able to defeat her enemies and Venivius went into hiding. 
It was in 60 AD when Boudicca, uh, after attacking London, was defeated by the Romans and that was the last real uprising as the major tribal leaders offering resistance to the Romans had been defeated and killed. After that, Roman Britain went through a nine-year period of relative peace, apart from the few minor uprisings. But it seems Vinivius was in the background waiting for a chance and rallying support amongst disaffected Brigantes who felt that the decision to turn over Caractacus to the Romans was disloyal and treacherous. It seems in AD 69, which is known as the Year of the Four Emperors, was the opportunity he was waiting for as Rome was in chaos and troops were deployed elsewhere, dealing with what to the Romans were more pressing matters. Parts of the tribe loyal to Venevius then rallied to attack Cartamandua. Once again, Cartamandua called for Roman support, but this time they could only muster auxiliary troops in her defence, and it didn't go so well. Venevius was victorious, and he took the crown of the Brigantes and became their sole leader. What actually happened to Cartamandua is unclear. Some accounts have her going to Chester under Roman protection, and other historians speculate that she was killed or executed after the battle. The truth is that there are no written records of her after AD 69. It is thought that Venivius then took up seat in Stanwyck and he was the one that carried out the stage three extensions to the fortifications. But it seems that these were not completed on the south sides because there's evidence of some battle and incomplete defences. What we do know is that Venivius was in power from AD 69 to AD 72 and it was during the reign of Emperor Vespasian that Venivius's uprising and control of the north and the Brigantes was brought to an end as they were crushed by the Romans and Venivius was killed. During this period from 72 AD to 79 AD there were a lot of tribes uprising and opposing Rome in the north on the borders. This constant unrest rest amongst the Brigantes and the bordering tribes led to the Romans annexing Brigantia. Their main admin base was moved from Stanwyck to Oldborough near Ripon. The following year in AD 80, Deer Street was constructed from York to the Firth of Forth. Around AD 100, the settlement of Brigantes, which were already in Piercebridge, were supplemented by settlements in Toss Field and south of the Tees and this was thought to be due to the Roman crossing and bridge which was put in place as part of the Deer Street road project. There may have been Roman fortifications or some Roman presence to protect the crossing but that is not backed up by evidence at this time. What is known is that the stone fort which I featured in my last video was constructed in 260 AD and Pierce Bridge had a very definite military presence for the next few centuries. 